Welcome back to the channel. Pack your bags because we're going on vacation today. We signed up for the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, dropped a couple G's, got that 100,000 point sign up bonus. We're cashing in, we're going all in with the points. First class airfare, luxury hotel, sign me up. We're going to Europe. We'll see you guys there. But today in this video, we're talking about how to use your points giving you the basic rundown and also talking about if you should use them on the first class flight of your life or if you should just cash them out, get that thousand dollars and cash, spend it however you want. We're gonna run through some scenarios and see what works for you. If you're new around here, be sure to get subscribed, like the video, let's go. So as you may know, Chase Sapphire Preferred Card had their 100,000 point bonus sign up offer. Unfortunately, that offer just ended, but it actually went on for way longer than I expect. I think it came out in like May, June. I thought it was gonna end by the start of July, August, but it went on all the way into September, I think. But now it's back down to the lower 60,000 point sign up. So if you're watching this video now, unfortunately you missed the bonus. They might have something in the future, but it could be in half a year, one year, two years, nobody really knows. If you're still interested in getting the card, it's still not a bad card. They just added a bunch of new benefits. Go check out my video on that update. We're here today assuming that you signed up back earlier this year, spent the $4,000 in the first three months, got the 100,000 points in your bank, in the rewards inbox, and now what do you do? Since this is a premium travel credit card, First thing comes to mind, we're going on vacation, but that's not the only thing you can use these points on. So real quick, obviously travel is the major thing that people think about. The Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, booking travel through that gets you 1.25 cents on each point, an increase from the one to one redemption ratio on anything else. You can use the portal to book flights, hotels, rental vehicles, all that good stuff and pay with your points and you'll get that bonus redemption value. You can also use the points and transfer them to Chase's travel partners. This includes airlines such as United, Southwest, American. This also includes a bunch of hotel chains, IHG among others. You redeem your points, usually a one-to-one -one ratio to their rewards program and you can get those points to spend on their flights or hotel stays. When people talk about the value of these points, the value of this card, Usually they're talking about these first two redemption options, either redeeming them for points, transferring the points to the travel partners and redeeming it there, or booking travel through the Chase portal. There are also some other options that you can choose to use with your points. Chase has this pay yourself back feature where you can use your points one to one ratio, one point valued about one cent, redeem it to pay off transactions on your credit card. So if you just bought something, worth $100 from Amazon, you can use those points and pay that off. And Chase also has some special bonus categories sometimes where it will give you 1.25 or 1.2 or even 1.5 times value on those points. For example, they could have groceries or other various categories that if you make a purchase through there, you can use those points to pay off those transactions. It will give you some more value. And also you can use it for like gift cards and other things. Finally, you can just straight up redeem these for cash back one to one, 1 1.1 1 .1 cent value, one to one ratio statement credit. It doesn't have to be any specific transactions. It will just pay off the balance on the statement credit similar to how other credit card rewards points works. Fairly simple, but for the 100,000 points, this will just be a flat $1,000 value as opposed to if you go through travel, it can be worth up to 1,250 or even more if you find some great redemption options through the travel partners. But are those redemption options actually the best way to use your points? We're gonna talk about it now. A lot of articles these days will give you the estimated value of each point when you transfer it to an airline partner. So let's say maybe if you transfer it to Southwest, it can be actually worth 1.2 cents a point because how Southwest calculates their redemptions for flights may actually give you a cheaper option. So for example, generally they recommend you, if you do redeem it for Southwest, redeem it for those shorter haul flights, you'll get more value as opposed to some longer Southwest flight options. If you redeem it for certain first class flights on international travel, you can get two cents, three, five, sometimes even up to seven cents per point value on those options. But we're gonna take a deeper dive into that and see if it's actually worth it 
worth the value. So this is a pretty common way that people use points. They will take these points and put them towards a round trip first class international flight that they usually normally wouldn't be able to afford or wouldn't spend that cash to go out and buy that first class ticket. A lot of us sometimes just travel economy cheapest but you obviously don't get all the luxuries that come with flying first class especially for longer 12 15 hour flights this could be a great way to sign a bonus to use those points and kind of splurge on yourself the reason why first class flights are so expensive the cash price is usually pretty ridiculous you'll see first class international flights five thousand eight thousand ten thousand or more dollars so that's the advertised cash price but sometimes with points you can get these for anywhere from 80,000 to 120,000 points. And technically these points worth $1,000, you can use it to pay for a $5,000 flight. So that's where you get these valuations where each point can actually be worth more than one cent or 1.25 cents. But the reason why these first class flights are so expensive, right? We have really high cash prices. Airlines know this. There's a limited amount of first class seats. So they try to maximize the value they can get out of this make back some of their margins on this sometimes if people are traveling for business or for corporate travel they're not really paying for it right the giant companies paying for it they have the budget for executives or sales or business people to travel in these airlines they, to travel on these first class seats they might sometimes get preferred pricing straight from the airline when you're looking at that angle the cash price of the flight doesn't really matter they'll shell out whatever they need you get the luxury amenities the larger seats the first class lounges the food and beverage in-flight service you might also get more flexible cancellation options so the airline may be more uncertain with their scheduling and ticketing also if you're just rich it doesn't matter right if you just have that money ten thousand dollar flight twenty thousand dollar flight whatever right that's not going to matter to you you can just pay for it but for the rest of us for the plebes for the broke millennials this is a great opportunity once in a lifetime chance to go round trip first class international maybe you can stretch that to a couple first class domestic flights but is it worth it we're going to talk about this later in the breakdown now the second option the more luxurious option is for hotel stays some hotels can cost upwards of one thousand dollars a night but for point redemptions you might be able to stay you know one to three nights at a luxury resort luxury hotel when you go on vacation we look at an example here is you can do a round trip to Europe via Delta for 100,000 points plus taxes and fees. So you could just cash out on that for this flight. It could be worth up to $6,000 if you don't use points, if you just buy it in cash. So you're getting the value there. And also be careful, taxes and fees can sometimes add up 50, 100, $200. So you wanna pay attention to that. You still might have to pay a little bit more in addition to the points you redeem. It's not completely free per se. Talking about these luxury hotels, two to three nights at luxury hotels, three nights at the Vienna Big Sur is going to cost you 30,000 points a night. You can do three nights there. One night at the St. Regis Maldives Resort, 85,000 big time points for just one night. The Park Hyatt, New York City, 30,000 points a night. Cash price, $1,000 a night. So you're, you're getting that value there. And sometimes they also waive the resort fee if you book with points, other times not. So check with that. Resort fees can be anywhere from $25 to $100 a night extra for those amenities. And if you use those points towards lower grade hotels, you can get anywhere from 10 to 15 nights of value. 20 nights at the Hyatt Regency, Belgrade, 5,000 points a night. 12 nights at the Hyatt Regency, Malta. 8,000 points a night. So just like flights, there's a variety of flexible options you can use from the basic end, right? If you just book a round trip flight from like Los Angeles to San Francisco, that's not gonna clear your point stash. If you book international round trip, LA, London, that's gonna clear out your points. Same with hotels. You book one night at a luxury resort, that's gonna cost 85,000 points, that's gone. But enjoy the night, right? Enjoy that one night, we're gonna stretch it. We're gonna take advantage of early checkout, all the amenities, obviously late checkout, splurge on the resort. Those are the luxurious op. But now let's break it down. In this part of the video, I've set aside some sample itineraries and sample budgets. We're gonna say you're not going on vacation by yourself, although I personally have gone on vacations by myself, but it's always better with a friend. A 10 night vacation for two. We're comparing airfare, hotel, 
the price of entertainment, tickets, transportation, splurging, all that good stuff, sample budget, adjust as needed. But this is, we're just gonna take a look at what it costs if you use all those points on a luxurious round trip business class flight, if you use all the points on a luxurious hotel stay, if you use those points on a normal hotel stay, if you use those points just cashing in for the cash back option, thousand dollar credit towards your vacation, What's the cost associated with all that? The more luxurious options are gonna be more expensive, but that's the trade-off, right? Do you want a cheaper vacation is the goal, and I'm not saying there's any right or wrong way to use your points. It's up to you. If your goal is to maximize your value, spend the least amount of money on this vacation as you can, you're gonna to wanna to stretch those points. But if your plan is to just have, maybe you've never been on a first class flight, you really, really wanna do it, go for it. You do you. If you wanna stay at a luxury resort for a couple nights, switch over to a normal hotel for the rest, you do you, go ahead and do that. But we're just gonna talk about some of the options and some things to think about when looking at the cost and redeeming these points. It's a currency. You can use your points for a thousand different things, but it's up to you on how you wanna use it. So the first example we have, 10 night vacation for two. We're going all out for at least one person. So that's the thing in here. Two person vacation, but if you're going a round trip to Europe, 100,000 points for that first class flight, that's only for one. So unfortunately, your second buddy is either gonna have to pony up the cash to sit in first class with you, or they're gonna have to sit up all the way back in economy, or maybe if they have the same car, the same sign up bonus as you, you can double the value get two free tickets but here we're just assuming one person has the credit card bonus so you got that round trip flight to Europe for one person and we're just assuming hundred dollars in taxes and fees the second person's gonna have to pay anywhere from 400 to 700 dollars for that round trip ticket 10 night hotel stay we're saying 80 bucks a night for a hotel I, th I think this is a good middle ground on one hand we have people staying at hostels for 10 20 dollars a night other people might spend up to $250 a night on a hotel, so adjust this to fit your needs. But I'm just gonna go ahead and average it out. $80 a night for a basic hotel, $60 of food a day for the two of you, 30 bucks each, pretty average. I will say it can be really easy to go over this depending on where you go, obviously the location as well, but just for argument's sake, $600 total for the food budget, and another $500 for ticket, transportation, entrance fees. So buying like bus passes, Ubers, if you're getting into museums, you're going to plays, you're going to events. $500 for the two of you, 200 bucks for a nice meal. This can also just be added on if you typically spend more on food. This can also be splurging if you wanna do some shopping. An extra 200 bucks just on top of it, just to cover some miscellaneous expenses. So all in all total, the first round trip flight for the one person only costed 100 bucks, whatever the tax and fees are. So we're coming out to around $2,600 to $3,000 depending on the flight price for the second person. So minimum 2,500, maximum $3,000 for this vacation. We take this into the second option now. We're going with the economy flights. So instead of using all the points on one first class flight, we're gonna use these points to book economy flights. Round trip to Europe, estimated 60,000 points for one round trip ticket plus $50 in tax and fees. So you use the rest of the points, 30,000 points on a one-way ticket for your buddy, $25 tax and fees, and they're gonna pay 200 to $400 to get back. This amount, you're using all of your points on the flights this time, and you're paying less. $800 in hotels, $1,300 in the food, entertainment, miscellaneous expenses this is coming out to two thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars so anywhere from twenty three hundred to twenty five hundred depending on that one-way ticket coming back cost here you're saving you know five hundred dollars from just the business class trip next scenario we're using all of our points on a luxury hotel stay so this is probably going to cover just three nights we're going to book the plane tickets cash price individually so two round trip tickets going to cost anywhere from eight hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars we're staying three nights at a nice hotel nice resort thirty thousand points a night and we're going to spend the rest of the seven nights at just a normal hotel we factor in 
$1,300 for the food miscellaneous expenses, $80 a night for the rest of the nights that you're not using the points on. This comes out to around $2,700 to $3,400 for this sample itinerary. If you want to stay at the resort for the full 10 nights, it's probably going to get way more expensive, $5,000, $10,000 depending on where you stay. Next up, we're using these points on just a normal hotel stay. So plane tickets, $800 to $1,400. 10 nights, we're cashing in 6,000 points per night. We're using 60,000 points on the hotel stay. $1,300 in the food, miscellaneous expenses. And then you actually still have 40,000 points left because we didn't actually use all of it on the hotel stays. So we're cashing in those 40,000 points, $400 credit. This comes out to $1,700 to $2,300 for this itinerary. Looking like the value winner so far, just depending on the hotels that you can get and if you can actually get it down to 6,000 points a night, depending on where you go. Last but not least, straight cash redemption. So we're using the credit card, buying the itinerary, straight cash, and then just redeeming the 100,000 points for cash on the statement credit. The plane tickets, the hotels, the food travel, it all adds up. We're gonna subtract $1,000 cash back into this redemption, $1,900 to $2,500, depending on the plane tickets. And also just to say, I didn't actually calculate the value of any points that you're getting for using the card. So, you know, we're using $2,000 on the card. You're gonna get rewards back on that. That's separate, calculated. We figured it might just equalize across the board. But all in all, taking a look at this, it looks like the cheapest option. So if your goal is to just use these bonus points, go on vacation, go on a nice vacation for the absolute cheapest, based on my assumptions here, based on the calculations here, it looks like it's actually gonna be using your points on just a normal hotel stay. You might find a nice sign up bonus. Now 6,000 points a night could be on the low end. You might have to go up to maybe 10,000 or even more. So in that case, it might come out around even with the straight cash redemption, but it's not a bad option. So these two, I would say, would be the cheapest options to hold your points. Don't use it on that first class flight. Don't use it on the luxury hotels. Just either use it to book a fairly normal hotel or to just book everything and then cash that in. Use it to pay off your statement after the fact. So that's all I had for this video. Just a simple comparison on some of the itineraries, giving you some ideas, some things to think about when you're sitting down looking like how do I want to actually use these points because it is a lot of points and there are a ton of ways to use them. I just want to give you some ideas of what the cost of a vacation would be if you spent it on some more stuff because although it might be nice to use the points on a first class plane ticket, you don't forget you actually have to pay for the rest of the vacation as well. You're not just flying there coming back. You got to eat, sleep, dine, entertain yourselves and those points could be put to good use on paying off some of the other stuff. Now also, you can just forget about all the traveling and if you just wanna buy a new PS5, buy a new computer, just use it to pay for that. That's the great thing about these points, they're really flexible. Once again, great credit card. Insane sign up offer. Unfortunately, it's over for now, but for those of you who got it, hey, let me know down in the comments how you plan on using these points. If you're thinking about doing the round trip first class and this actually changed your mind, let me know. Because this is also giving you a thing to think about because when people say these points can be valued at up to three cents a point, five cents a point, they're talking about these insane cash prices for the first class trip that normally, right, for me at least, I wouldn't necessarily go out and do. Sure, it's a nice experience, but I'd rather pay less for my vacation overall. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get subscribed, like the video for more content. Peace.